Volkswagen, the automobile of the Third Reich. The idea behind the Volkswagen, or people's car, was initially conceived in the early 1930s, before ultimately coming to fruition by the outbreak of the Second World War. Adolf Hitler, the Führer of Nazi Germany, commissioned a vehicle that would be affordable, practical, and most importantly, available to every member of society in the Großdeutschland. The general production of the Volkswagen ultimately stalled during the Second World War. However, the Third Reich was forced to mobilize its national industries in order to keep up with the demands of their military efforts. In 1933 and 1934, Adolf Hitler proposed two ideas, domestic highways and an affordable automobile. The Autobahn, literally meaning motorway or highway, was planned to be 6,000 kilometers long, four lanes wide, and fully completed within five years. At a ceremonial groundbreaking in Frankfurt, Hitler himself shoveled the first sod of earth from the Autobahn's opening site. In a country stricken hard by the global economic depression, however, Germany had relatively few car owners. To counter this, the Third Reich solicited designs for small, affordable cars, automobiles that would be exempt from the class-based tradition of car ownership. Hitler and his subordinates wanted a car that was a thousand Reichsmarks, or less, could reach a speed of 50 miles per hour, and was fuel efficient. In June 1934, Ferdinand Porsche was tasked with designing a small car to meet the Reich's needs. The automobile designer had once worked for Daimler-Benz before starting his own consulting business in 1931. Porsche worked closely with the Reich Association of the German Automobile Industry, the RDA, to produce his Volksauto, the first prototypes of which were produced in 1936. Porsche came up with several designs between 1934 and 1938, while in 1937, Gesellschaft zur Vorbereitung des Deutschen Volkswagens, MBH, was founded in Berlin. It would later be referred to as Volkswagenwerk, the Volkswagen Group, and the People's Car Company. The first Volkswagen factory opened in 1938 at Stadt des KDF Wagens bei Fahrersleben, an incorporated site in Lower Saxony. The facility, known as Wolfsburg, was based on what German officials learned from their visits to Ford factories in Detroit. The factory was one mile long and was sat on 10,000 acres. The first construction workers to start building at Wolfsburg were German, but were later supplemented by large numbers of Italian laborers. That same year, Hitler announced the car at a Nazi rally, telling onlookers, it is for the broad masses that this car has been built. Its purpose is to answer their transportation needs, and it is intended to give them joy. The first Volkswagens produced were released in 1939. People could purchase the VW38, the predecessor of the later Volkswagen Beetle, on an installment plan for 990 Reichsmarks. The car itself was similar to other more expensive cars in design, featuring rear-wheel drive and a four-cylinder engine. The Nazis had hoped to produce 20,000 VW38s in 1939, with 100,000 and 200,000 to follow during 1940 and 1941, respectively. When World War II broke out, Germany put the people's car on hold and used the factory at Wolfsburg for military production. The factory produced bombs, tanks, and carried out repairs on aircraft in 1940. In 1941, a version of the Volkswagen was made that had been specifically designed for the military called the Kubelwagen. It featured a soft roof, better traction, and higher ground clearance. Only about 600 civilian cars were made at Wolfsburg between 1939 and 1945. However, it's estimated that 66,285 military vehicles were made in this time, using approximately 20,000 forced laborers that had been relocated to the plant. Women from Poland were brought in as early as June 1940, with Soviet prisoners also forced to work at the plant from 1941 onwards. A concentration camp known as Arbeitsdorf was established on the grounds of the plant in early 1942, although it was ultimately shut down by year's end. Dutch students deemed enemies of the Reich worked in the plant in 1943, as did French citizens and Italian laborers who transitioned from free men to prisoners following Italy's truce with the Allied powers. In early 1944, as the Reich's desperation for armaments grew, concentration camps were again deemed as the immediate solution to help bolster production. 
As a result, two satellite concentration camps were built at the site of Fanesleben Lagberg, around three kilometers from Wolfsburg, and were filled with inmates from the region's main concentration camp at Neuengamme. In April 1944, Wolfsburg was bombed by American forces, damaging parts of it but not knocking it out of commission. Prisoners from Auschwitz, Birkenau, among other concentration camps, were brought to the plant in May, before the facility was once again bombed by the Americans in August. By the end of 1944, there had been an estimated 156 million Reichsmarks worth of damage dealt to the plant, a development undoubtedly compounded by the Wehrmacht's rapid retreat from the Western Front and the Luftwaffe's struggle to maintain control of the skies above Germany. American forces finally liberated Wolfsburg in early 1945 on their march to Berlin. It was the British who then seized control of the facility and began producing cars to meet the needs of the Allied forces occupying the region. The British-controlled factory produced around 1,800 Volkswagens for military use in 1945 and just over 10,000 in 1946. It was then decided that Volkswagen vehicles should be sent back to England as part of a large-scale plan by the Allies to help repair the German economy. This in turn gave Volkswagen an international presence. Cars were subsequently exported to the Netherlands, Switzerland and Belgium, among other Western European countries by 1948. Continuing to grow in popularity, it wasn't long before Volkswagen had broken the shores of the United States, with the first Beetle arriving there in 1949. That same year, British authorities ultimately decided to hand control of the factory back over to the West German government upon the official formation of the Federal Republic of Germany. Having helped to stimulate the economy in the difficult post-war period, Volkswagen was one of several industrial giants that no doubt contributed to the so-called German economic miracle that witnessed a rapid recovery of the West German economy in the decade after the Second World War. The reconstruction and rebirth of German industry alongside foreign initiatives such as the Marshall Plan provided the citizens of West Germany with a much-needed sense of hope that the failures of Versailles and the instability of the interwar years would not be repeated.